Hello and thank you for joining us. My name is Ben Sheen, I'm a managing editor here at Stratfor, and here with me today in the studio, we've got science and technology analyst Rebecca Keller, who will be talking about additive manufacturing, better known as 3D printing. So Becca, when you think of 3D printing, what comes into your head immediately? That the the term 3D printing sort of makes people think of, of a traditional printer, and that's not mm -hmm. what the process is. It's additive manufacturing. So if you think about traditional manufacturing processes of subtractive, it's a little bit easier to think about what additive manufacturing actually means. So it's it's building um, the the part or the 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 toy or the device layer by layer by layer. There's a lot of ways to do it. There's different methods, but that's that's the essential thing is you're building it up versus breaking it down as you would in like a, a mold or or that, that the traditional kind of process. Now, that technology has been around for at least a couple of decades, but it's only really in the last few years we've seen some major breakthroughs. What sort of materials and processes are we seeing now? So th there have been, it's been, ex the research and the technology has definitely been accelerating over recent years. And some of that has to do with the, the original patents expiring. So that's mm. helped bring along um, some innovation as well. But uh, we see plastics, which were the, the first material, metals, ceramics. The Chinese um, are working with bone. You know, there, there's diff a lot of different kinds of materials that are being used. And you mentioned an interesting thing there is that one of the purposes of additive manufacturing, you can create these very complex internal structures. When you look at the honeycomb structure of a bone, that's really hard to replicate traditionally. What are some of the limitations we're actually seeing in the industry at the moment? So the limitations right now, the big ones are speed. It actually takes a really long time comparatively to make a lot mm. of these products cost. Um, we have seen the cost come down, especially since patents have expired. Um, but that's on consumer goods, the consumer printers for, for you know, toys that, that look like your child or, you know, personalized consumer goods. And then we're also looking at repeatability. Uh, you're looking at, you, you make one thing, you make it personalized, that's great, but if you wanted to make it like a traditional manufacturing process, ensuring the, the repeatability of, of the product is also important. Especially for heavy industry, when you look at actually the scale which you'd need to manufacture on, do you think we're moving towards something like a Moore's Law for 3D printing, where you need to consider time, size, scale, to build a building will take you a ridiculous amount of time? I'm not sure we'll ever make it to Moore's Law. Buildings are interesting. Uh, wood, wood is also one of the materials used for printing. Um, mm. but. I do think that, that speed will will, will uh, decrease, it will get faster. I do think that the cost will continue to come down. But I'm not sure that it will ever replace traditional manufacturing. I'm not sure it will ever get to that point. It's a really important technology for niche markets. It's, it's important for the aerospace industry, for the auto industry, for the medical industry. There's lots of industries that can use it, but it's not necessarily going to replace the, the bulk manufacturing process at this point, or even in the near future. So who are the, the global leaders at the moment in the technology? Um, the U.S. is one of the global leaders, and it has been since the beginning. It's one of the innovators, but we're also seeing a lot of investment from the U.K., from Germany, from China, um, has put hundreds of billions of dollars or pledged hundreds of billions of dollars into the process. Singapore is an interesting case, who's also putting a lot of government funds towards research and development of the technology. So we're seeing it, the, the scope on the countries involved broaden moving forward. So what do you think right now are the next steps we're going to see in terms of the, the evolution, development and expansion of 3D printing? Next steps. So I, I, I think new materials. I mm -hmm. think that's a big one, um, especially in the medical fields. Um, I think that increasing the speed is going to be important. We, have, we saw a study come out a couple of months ago from the University of North Carolina that increased the speed between 20 five to a hundred times using a new a new process. So we're definitely looking at seeing increased speeds. With more patents expiring, we could see new methods of 3D printing decreasing costs the same way we saw the, um, the plastics uh, co uh, consumer goods printing method decrease in cost in the past years. So we will see a decrease in cost as well. Certainly a lot on the horizon that we can anticipate moving forward then. Absolutely. Brilliant. Well, Becca, thank you so much for thank joining you. me here today. For more on this science-related topic and many more, please continue to read stratfor.com.